Okay, I think with this short video, we're going to be able to wrap up what's left of the summer assignment, Chapter 3. Uh, just going up through parts of Chapter 3 here. And we're going to whip through these fairly quickly, so if you need to stop the, the uh, video and uh, look more closely at something, well, you know how to do that. So, find the molar mass of these compounds. And that seems like it would be fairly straightforward. That's number 37. Moving on to number 39. Um, oh, let me skip back there. Did I? Okay, yeah. Moving on to 39, we're also finding the molar mass of these three compounds. Uh, and the only one of these that anyone ever has any difficulty with is if they mess up the formula. They don't get the empirical formula right here for um, the ammonium dichromate and they don't put this two here or they don't notice oh there are two nitrogens so if you didn't get the right answer here uh, that could be an explanation why that's number 39 number 41 is taking those same three compounds and finding the moles in one gram of each so that should be for the ammonia. That should be 0.587 moles of ammonia. Uh, for this compound that slips my mind what the name of it is right now, that should be 0.0312 moles. And for the ammonium dichromate, that should be 0.00397 moles of the ammonium dichromate. And of course, you were careful as you went through there to make sure that, okay, let's see, the units are working out. And you know, sometimes you may miss writing any unit like this in the middle of the problem. And that's not usually going to be a, prob uh, a problem as far as a score on anything that you're doing for this class. And sometimes you may even start leaving a few of those out just to kind of speed your process along. But you have to be very careful that you don't get confused about your units as you're working on those. Number 43, we're working with the same three compounds, and we're converting five moles of each of those compounds into grams. So for the ammonia, that'll be 85.2 grams. Um, for this compound, 160 grams. I should have looked up the name for that, huh? And for the ammonium dichromate, 1260 grams and notice we have the right number of sig figs in each of these answers three sig figs we have been watching and been very careful with sig figs in all the problems so far number 45 find the mass of nitrogen in five moles of each of these compounds and so in there's a couple of ways of doing this problem uh, you could go from percent composition and multiply by the uh, the percent composition of nitrogen in the compound by the total molar mass of the compound or uh, in this case I chose to take five moles of the compound and in one mole there's one mole of nitrogen and one mole of ammonia so I just multiply then the molar mass of nitrogen by one mole of ammonia, 70.1 grams of nitrogen. Now in this compound, the difference is that in our formula, we have two nitrogens. So there are two moles of nitrogen for every one mole of the compound. And in the final example, there are two moles of nitrogen here as well, two moles of nitrogen for every one mole of the compound. So that should fix up number 45 for you if you had any questions on it. Number 59 is about percent composition. And you probably remember that to find percent composition, we find the percentage of each of the elements in the compound. So we find the molar mass, 
and then divide, in this case, molar mass 72.07. Uh, we divide the total mass of the carbon by the molar mass and gives us 49.99. The total mass of hydrogen divided by the molar mass gives us the percent composition of hydrogen and we do the same thing for oxygen. Now you may see slightly slightly different answers in the back of the book uh, if you've looked there and um, that's okay. The reason has to do with the periodic table that I used compared to the periodic table that you may have used and uh, we're probably okay. Uh, I used uh, probably a little bit different molar mass here for hydrogen and it also limited my sig figs to only three sig figs here uh, in the percent of hydrogen. So you want to compare that with what you got and uh, you may have gotten the same thing that they have in the back of the book and that's okay. Number 59B, there are the percent compositions. You've probably already checked those in the back of your book. 59C, and then I think the last problem, uh, find the percent composition of CH2O, and that comes out to 39.99% carbon, 6.71% hydrogen, and 53.30% oxygen. Now what's important to notice about 65? is A and B. You'll notice that A is in the lowest whole number ratio, so it's the empirical formula. And this molecular formula has the same empirical formula. So what does that tell you the percent composition is going to be? Well, you may find that it's off in one or other of the elements by a hundredth of a percent but you're going to find the percent compositions very close. And the only differences have to do with uh, rounding errors that are introduced into the problem as you're working through it. That should be the end of your summer assignment. You may want to check in later and uh, see if I've posted a video that talks a little bit about Wednesday's test.